Hi, my name is Dr. Bill Owens, and thank you very much for taking this time to uh, speak with me today and uh, listen to this video. Um, I want to focus on, on this segment specifically on using electronic medical records or EMR macros and templates. Now, um, we know that a lot of states are, are currently or have implemented medical treatment guidelines for a variety of reasons. And we could sit and debate maybe why those uh, guidelines were implemented. Um, but the funny thing is, is that they're always touting that these guidelines were put in place because that's what the evidence shows. The research shows X, Y, and Z, so therefore we're creating these guidelines. The problem is the legislative process of implementing these guidelines does not keep pace with the academic process of publishing research. Published research is coming out at a phenomenal rate. The legislative process for anybody that's uh, been um, alive knows that it's a, a trickle. So a uh, good metaphor is the legislative process is the slow dripping water faucet that's um, one drop at a time. The research process and the amount of research that's being published is akin to a fire hydrant that's open. They both don't match. They're very different. As an example, um, I practice in New York and um, in December of 2010, the Workers' Compensation Board implemented medical treatment guidelines for neck, low back, shoulder, and knee. And this was touted as we went through all of the evidence, we looked at all the research, and as a committee, we came up with this, these medical treatment guidelines. Well, the interesting thing was from a chiropractic perspective, they only allow acute interventions for workers' compensation patients. Their uh, rationale was there is no published research that shows that chiropractic can benefit chronic pain. And okay? we know that that's not true to begin with. Um, historically, so they omitted that. But that was in December of 2010. April of 2011, so that is five months after those guidelines were published, the same organization that was, um, that provided those guidelines, it's a National Occupational Health Organization, they also published a new article that said chiropractic was unique and that it can deal with chronic spine pain and no other profession can. That was five months later, okay? That was 2011. It's 2013 right now as I talk about this. It's been two years and not one thing has changed. Not one thing has changed. So in the beginning when the legislative process is talking about we're using evidence, that's fine and I think that's important. The problem is there's no mechanism within those legislative decisions to update the guidelines to keep them true to what's being published. It's at a standstill. So what happens is, as soon as those guidelines are published, within six months, they're completely out of date. So how do we fix that and what do we do about it? The solution is only twofold, um, or there's one of two solutions. One is we go in and influence the legislative process, which we know can you know, uh, make you bald or give you gray hair almost instantly. Secondly, what we want to do is uh, instead, is we want to take in our reporting, we want to create macros with that research that justifies what we're doing. And that's what emrmacros.com is all about. emrmacros.com is a website that um, my staff and I research chiropractic evidence. Uh, we look at the evidence for electric stim. We look at the evidence for ultrasound. We look at what is the evidence for somebody that has fibromyalgia uh, and was in a car accident. Are you gonna treat them or need to treat them longer than somebody that was healthy? What about people that have peripheral artery disease? Are they gonna be a more complex patient? Okay, we take that research and we put it into macros that you can insert into your medical record or your chiropractic record, your electronic record to justify why your care is being prolonged. So what we're gonna do, instead of fighting the legislative side, we're going to actually create a system, we have a system, so that you can document your particular individual patient's need on an individual basis. Because that's where it's really important. It's important to handle every case 
as it comes and document the importance and the unique characteristics of that case. So what happens is um, it's a monthly fee. You go on the, the site and you look um, for the research, uh, what you, you know, it could be anything that you need. Um, there's also a section in that website that will give you the proper language for ordering EMGs, MRIs, CAT scans, x-rays, CTs, referring to physical therapy, referring to pain management, and on and on and on. Uh, we did partner with one electronic healthcare uh, record company and that those macros are already inserted, inserted in there. So when I do my notes, if I'm referring for a shoulder consultation, I'll click and drag that macro. If I'm showing that I'm treating this patient's headaches because there's a neck problem, I drag that research that shows chiropractic intervention to the neck reduces headaches, okay? This is critical, and I'll be perfectly blunt with you here, you don't have a choice. In the next three to five years, the country will be set up that if you don't have evidence in your treatment uh, records, you will not get paid. We're seeing it in two states right now, New Jersey and Texas. Those tend to be bellwether states legislatively. New York decided to do it a little bit different, but it's the same concept and it's gonna be happening from the coasts towards the middle of the country. This is gonna take you about a year to implement, okay, so, and understand how to use, so you have to start now. So for more information, go to emrmacros.com. My information is at the bottom of the page here, but if you want to maintain your collections for the services that you legitimately provided that were medically necessary, you have to have rationale in your notes, and it takes less than a tenth of a second to do that if you have access to that information. We've sorted through, uh, we go through honestly about 5,000 biomedical journals a week um, with keyword searches and we pull the new research and that is what gets inserted and updated. So you will always be up to date, you will always be compliant and your notes and your documentation will be put together in a way that will limit your denials. Um, my reimbursement went from um, maybe 70-80% before I implemented this to close to 95-96% uh, without any running around. So it's a critical component of what you're doing um, and it can be added to any electronic record system uh, out there. It, it's very easy, we just build the macro. So I look forward to talking to you and thank you very much for uh, listening to this short video.